In the early 1590s, Japanese leader Toyotomi Hideyoshi had unified Japan with hopes of conquering China and expanding Japanese influence in Asia. His force was met with little significant opposition until the Korean admiral Yi Shin Shin realized Korea's only major advantage lay in their navy. In a critical stand, the Battle of Myongyang, Yi's navy crippled that of the Japanese, leading to a lack of support for the Japanese land forces and their eventual withdrawal from Korea. In this, Yi helped limit Japan's power for centuries, for he halted Japanese expansion and weakened the Toyotomi government, which was soon overthrown and replaced by the Tokugawa shogunate, which established a policy of isolation lasting for centuries. Toyotomi Hideyoshi arose in the Japan of the Warring States period, wherein the country lacked a central government and regional leaders governed their domains absolutely. Hideyoshi worked his way up from a peasant to the unifier and leader over all of Japan. During this time, he perfected his war tactics, leveraging large peasant armies against the small groups of samurai which had dominated Japanese warfare for centuries. This was especially effective after his adoption of the arquebus a light, easily learned, easily manufactured firearm recently introduced by the Portuguese. He subdued the final opponents in Japan in 1591 and thus created a unified Japan. Soon after Hideyoshi looked to expand outward. His goal was Japanese rule over most of the world as he knew it, including Korea, China, Vietnam, India, the Philippines, and Indonesia. The first step was to secure Korea as access to invade China. He wrote to the Korean government, After my birth, a fortune teller said that all the land Sun Chonan would be mine when I became a man. I've never fought without conquering, and when I strike, I always win. I will make a leap and land in China and lay my lies upon her. I shall go by way of Korea. The Korean government refused to cooperate due to their long-standing ties with China. Furthermore, they thought little of the threat posed to their country and accordingly prepared very little. Failure of the Korean nation to comply with Hideyoshi's demand prompted him to turn to war. He gathered a force of 225,000 soldiers trained by years of civil war, many of whom were armed with arquebuses. The first attack of 150,000 men landed on the southeast coast of Korea at the port of Busan on May 23, 1592. The Korean defenses with few soldiers and outdated weaponry were no match for the massive Japanese army and deadly muskets. After capturing Busan, the army proceeded north towards Korea's capital Seoul. Standing in their path was the city of Jungju, which the Korean army prepared as a strategic defense of their capital. However, when the Japanese arrived, the Korean army suffered a critical defeat. Upon hearing this, many of the residents, defenders, and leaders of Seoul fled their capital, leaving it vulnerable to attack. The few remaining troops at Seoul attempted to halt the Japanese at the Han River but were easily overwhelmed. In only three weeks, the Japanese had conquered over two-thirds of Korea's land, including the capital. However, one Korean leader was successful against the Japanese, Admiral Yi Shin Shin. He had foreseen the threat of the invasion and had been diligent in training his troops and preparing his navy. He realized Korea's only major advantage was the ships and cannons of their navy. Korea had for centuries fought primarily against naval pirates, but the fighting in Japan had been mostly land-based civil war, so Korean ships were superior. Their cannons had greater range and power, and their hulls were more resistant to cannonballs. Yi also utilized the newly developed turtle ship, an ironclad battleship with spike roofs to make boarding, a fundamental part of Japanese naval attack, impossible. Cannons in all directions, 14 in all, and the head of a dragon in his bow. Yi combined his superior ships with effective tactics. Specifically, he would send the turtle ships to lead the attacks close in on the Japanese fleet and wreak havoc among it. This provided an opportunity for the main contingent to keep distance and send volleys of cannonballs and arrows into the Japanese ships, 
In doing so, Yi succeeded in 10 separate naval battles in the first year of the invasion, using his fleet of 85 ships to sink hundreds of Japanese ships while keeping Korean losses minimal. In 1597, Hideyoshi launched a second wave of invaders following some years of pause. The Korean court received a message which appeared to be one Japanese general betraying the location of his rival's transport fleet. However, Yi refused orders to act, for he saw it was an obvious trap. For this, Yi was demoted and imprisoned, and without him, the Korean navy fell into the Japanese trap. Upon arrival at the location, they were met not by a transport fleet, but by a mighty fleet of warships, from which the Korean navy suffered heavily. Only 12 ships escaped destruction. The Korean navy once again called on Yi. He took up the challenge to take a stand, writing to the Korean court, Your humble servant still commands no fewer than 12 ships. If I engage the enemy fleet with resolute effort, even now, as I believe, they can be driven back. He took a stand against the Japanese fleet at Myongyang Strait. The narrow waterway was easily maneuvered by Yi's small force, but the massive Japanese fleet was bottlenecked, so Yi's force could face it in manageable numbers. The strong, changing currents added to the chaos for the Japanese, so that they could not effectively maneuver their ships and were unable to escape the hailstorm of Korean arrows and cannonballs. Yi's 12 ships succeeded against more than 130 Japanese ships, sinking 31 of them. Through Stand at Myongyang and other Korean sexes, the Japanese forces were devastated beyond repair. The navy could not provide troops and supplies across the LOC as was the plan. Instead, troops and supplies had to be brought inefficiently by land. The Japanese army was spread thin. It had suffered significant losses to the Korean and Chinese armies. Lacking supplies, some Japanese troops suffered from starvation and insufficient protection from the cold. After Toyotomi Hideyoshi died in 1598, Japanese leadership realized their defeat and ordered a withdrawal. In the Battle of Noryang, Admiral Yi's force attacked a retreating Japanese fleet of 500 ships and sunk 200 of them. During the fighting, Yi was struck by a musket ball and died with the words, The battle is at its height. Do not announce my death. Korea was victorious. The last of the Japanese forces evacuated Korea on December 24, 1598. Following the expensive defeat in Korea, Japan once again became divided. Some remained loyal to the Toyotomi family, but many began to support Tokugawa Ieyasu, a prominent leader who had ruled under Hideyoshi. Tokugawa and his force defeated the Toyotomi loyalists in 1600 at the Battle of Sekigahara. He then established the Tokugawa Shogunate, which lasted until 1868. Yasu and later Tokugawa shoguns turned their focus of rule to maintaining stability and peace in Japan, and thus isolated Japan from other countries' influences. In 1635, the shogunate decreed traveling abroad illegal, punishable by death. Envoys and trade were excluded to Korea and were highly limited. Moreover, in 1639, Spanish and Portuguese missionaries were expelled from their base at Nagasaki and were thereafter prohibited in Japan to reduce the threat of division imposed by Christian converts. Thus, Japan had no major contact with the West until the American Commodore Matthew Perry arrived in 1853. The war which Admiral Yi was instrumental in winning was an important factor in Japan's shift in power and thus their transition from expansionism to isolationism. For the defense of his country, Yi has become one of the most celebrated characters of Korean history. Honored by numerous statues and shrines throughout South Korea, as well as a festival in his commemoration on his birthday. He also remains a highly regarded figure in naval history, as evidenced by the words of the great Japanese Admiral Togo Hihashiro following his successes in the Russo-Japanese War. You may wish to compare me with Lord Nelson, but do not compare me with Korea's Admiral Yi Shun Shin, he is too remarkable for anyone.